All right. I hope I got enough of a voice to do this here tonight. Let's read. Let's read Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37. This, we, we quote this verse a lot, so it's very familiar to you. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Sounds real simple, but it's not really that simple. Sounds like uh, uh, something that, uh, I tell you, it's a lot more profound than it sounds. It's a lot more thorough than it sounds. It's a lot more important than it sounds when we read through it the first time. Psalm 11, verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So I want to talk to you tonight just for a little bit about uh, the pagan mind. All right. Lord, help us. The first and great commandment. That's what we just read there in Matthew 22. We can go back in Deuteronomy, read the same thing. It says the same thing. God told the Old Testament. Jews, that was in the law, the beginning of the law, that's what it was. That's what it was summed up in. Jesus made it clear that, that was, that's what it amounts to right there. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And in the Old Testament it says with all thy strength. So it's the basis of everything else concerning our knowledge of God and our relationship with Him. That's the basis right there. <clears throat> it's very simple. We must love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Now, there's people who love with their heart, and there's people who love with their mind, and it's two different things. If you separate them, we have to love with our whole being. Now, before paganism can gain control of a people, a nation, every part of our being must be corrupted. Our heart, our soul, our mind. And this corruption has to spread through the people as a whole. You know, individually... The devil deals with us this way individually, but it also, he deals with people as a whole this way. The same plan that will defeat you will defeat it, us as a whole. The same thing that sends you to hell will send a nation to hell. Whether you do it individually or whether you get together and all do it at the same time, it has the same effect, but... One person individually can perish here and there, but when the whole nation goes down together, it's quite a calamity, <clears throat> catastrophe, tragedy. The heart is the easiest to corrupt because it's the part of our being that desires and feels. That's where all of our lusts, our desires. Lust is desires. Don't think, when we say lust, don't think, of just one thing. It's our desires. It's the easiest to corrupt them because all the devil has to do is wave something shiny in front of you. Put some pornog pornography in front of you. Yeah. Put some, you know, anything like that in front of you and he's got, he's already thrown the hook at you. So it's the easiest to corrupt. It's the easiest to entice. It's the easiest to to corrupt. Music alone can carry our heart away from God. Uh, emotion can quickly and easily carry our heart away from God. <clears throat> you know, like falling in love. Falling in love. Do you ever find that in the Bible? Do you ever find that anywhere where it talks about man and wife? courtship or anything does it ever talk about anything like that no it doesn't that's a, a worldly carnal human concept this deal of just love is just this thing that you just see them and you get this feeling you know they explain that the pagans explain it cupid shoots a arrow in your heart cupid got you you saw her, 
and all of a sudden you felt it. You just felt it. <clears throat> you were in love. And then that just throws off everything else. Nothing else matters. You're in love. I hear it all the time in old things and stories, you know. Well, if you're in love, that's all that matters. Do you love her? Do you love him? Yeah, well, that's all that matters. Is that all that matters, huh? That kind of love. <clears throat> that means you have this strange <coughs> feeling and desire toward this person that you can't control and you didn't volunteer for, and yet there it is. It's just something that overwhelms you and overcomes you without your will being a part of it or anything. <coughs> Gonna have to have some water, Terry. You're gonna make it. <coughs> I mean, it'll put you out of source with God right away. You forget all about God when you fall in love with another person. Amen. <coughs> you get angry, you'll forget all about God real quick. You get it's just like being drunk or something. You're out of your mind. You lose. That emotion will set you against God. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, then carnal pleasure and indulgence, those are things that will separate you from God. Corrupt your heart. That's what we're talking about. You're supposed to love the Lord with what? All your what? First thing, Heart. <clears throat> Well, if you're in love with somebody else, that's going to occupy your heart. You all know that, don't you? Yes. Love is blind. Blind to what? Well, God and everything else and everybody else. It's just you're focused on one thing. You're, it's an obsession. Just get the people all focused on these things so that their minds are occupied with pursuing these things. Uh, keep the music and the images before their faces. And guess what's going to happen? Their heart ain't going to be in love with God. Their heart ain't going to be focused on God. Jeremiah seventeen nine: The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? <clears throat> I read this the other day. David's prayer. <clears throat> things like this are real. I take them real seriously because <clears throat> David was a special man. And at the end of David's life, when David makes this special prayer at this special occasion when they anointed Solomon king and when he turned the kingdom over to Solomon while he's still yet alive, the thing that David prayed, I think it's mighty important. I ain't going to read the whole thing, but I am going to read this. Verse, uh, First Chronicles twenty nine eighteen. David prayed this, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, Keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto thee. You see what David was praying for? Just what i just been talking about. <clears throat> David was praying that these people would always love God with all their heart. Yes. <coughs> the imaginations of the heart are always driven by desires. The Bible talks about the thoughts of the heart, the imaginations of the heart. It doesn't say the imaginations of the mind. It says the imaginations of the heart. The heart and the mind are, I mean, they're really connected together. <clears throat> they're not separate entities. We talk about them like they are, but the heart <clears throat> can, through its desire, use the mind for its vain imaginations, and it's wicked imaginations. The imaginations of the heart are always driven by desires. And they can be carnal, or they can be holy. Now, <clears throat> technology has isolated everybody now, so that there's no social support for righteousness, and total continual access to evil of all kinds privately. <clears throat> Have you ever thought about this? You know, people used to sit around the the fireplace, the hearth. That was their evening. They sat around the hearth and talked and read, you know, together. Yes. <clears throat> then the television replaced the hearth. And everybody sat around the television and watched it together. 
That's how I grew up. We grew up sitting watching the television in the evening. But everybody was sitting there watching it together. <clears throat> and everybody was talking to each other about the goings on there. But now everybody's got their own private screen. And they sit around isolated one from another. The devil's got everybody off in a corner. Just him and them. And so they're the social thing in, uh, among us, everybody's, we talk about being socially retarded. Well, everybody is to a certain extent now. But especially the younger generations that have caught on to this. Man, I read a bunch of statistics and I ain't even going to try to give them to you. But the first iPhone I read came out in 2007. And since then, <clears throat> uh, teenage suicides and all have went up 60%. And, uh, it, you know, it's doing things to the mind of everybody. The soul, let me hurry. The soul is who we are and where we came from. It's our awareness of our existence. It's who I am, who I think I am, and what others think I am. Now, the soul is corrupted only through the mind and the heart being deceived uh, about its identity and origin and source of life. Then we don't love God with our soul. You, can't, you don't love God if you think you came from a monkey or a piece of slime somewhere. Or outer space or anything else. Seen a picture today of Jesus and a flying saucer coming down for him. <clears throat> the mind is another matter. And it's there that the devil has to gain control in order to control the whole being. <clears throat> we're made in God's image and likeness and God is a rational being now this is what I want to talk about tonight here rational the mind has to be corrupted the heart's easy to corrupt with the images with the music with the, the, the noise of this world and all the colors and the flashy things and all the pleasures and things the heart's easily corrupted that way the mind is must be corrupted also before uh, paganism can take over. Before you'll abandon God completely, your mind has to be corrupted. Rational thinking. You know, we're saying all the time, the world's going crazy. Everybody's insane. I mean, how, where does all this stuff come from? That you, you, you were born a, a male, but you, you want to be a girl, so you can be a girl if you want to, even though you're a male. They can do everything they want to to your body. They can mutilate you. They can rearrange things and do all that, but when they check your DNA, you're still a male or a female. Down to the very DNA in every cell of your body, you're male or female. That's a fact. But yet, there's this popular belief that, man, they believe it. That you can just be whatever you want to be. If you say you're a girl, you're a girl, even though you're a boy, or vice versa. Such nonsense is that. You know, the climate change, you know, what a bunch of nonsense. The climate has always changed, and it's the evidence is everywhere on earth that it's been far more extreme climate change than what we're experiencing right now. And the climate could change tomorrow. By the sun just cooling off one degree or something. I mean, it'll change everything. And man thinks that he's in control of it all. And, and you know, just the, the illogic, irrational, irrational thinking. Rational means agreeable to reason, not absurd, preposterous, extravagant, foolish, fanciful, or the like. Wise, judicious. As rational conduct, a rational man, a rational person is somebody you can talk to. You can sit down and talk to him. <coughs> you can find the facts, discuss the facts, and come to some kind of understanding or agreement. That's a rational person. An irrational person is a person who denies, ignores the facts, the truth. <coughs> they have fancies in their head. They have ideas and opinions, and that's what they lean on and believe in, no matter what the facts say. Yeah. So God's reasoning is based upon truth. God don't 
deal in fancies and imaginations and falsehoods. God deals in truth. <clears throat> Thy word is truth. God's reason is based upon truth, and therefore any reasoning not based upon truth and submitted to truth is irrational reasoning, and it's not sound. And it won't work, at least in the long term. <laughs> and it is a lie. Irrational thinking is a lie. It's false. It's not true. Any conclusion that you come to by thinking irrationally is a lie. Think about that. Therefore, you know, there must be a foundational truth for moral law and for rational reasoning. See, all this that we're talking about paganism, we tend to think only in the moral realm. But I'm trying to get across to you tonight that that's just half of the picture. God has to corrupt our heart. Our, the devil has to corrupt our hearts. Yes. <clears throat> and then he has to corrupt our minds. Yep. How does he corrupt our minds? He changes how we reason and think. Mm -hmm. From rational to irrational. Now, the facts are the facts. So there's really just only one way to reason and think and come to a conclusion. Right. You get all the facts, you lay them out, and you, you put them together, and you discover the order, and you come to a conclusion. That's real science. Right. You study the facts, what is, what really is, and then you come to a conclusion. You don't look at things and come to a conclusion by what you think of them or how they please you or not or what, how they affect you or not. The process by which Satan brings humanity into captivity involves corrupting man morally and mentally. <clears throat> First thing, absolutes must be erased in both moral issues and in rational thinking and reasoning. <clears throat> I don't want to stop and, and hammer on each point, but, but I hope you'll get that. The heart must be corrupted and the thinking must be corrupted. The heart must be corrupted before the reasoning can be corrupted. Corrupted reasoning comes from a corrupted heart, which is a heart, are you listening to me, that has begun to cast off restraints and loose from its moorings or foundations. When you just start doing as you please, in spite of what you know that is wrong. It's what happened to Eve when she went ahead and took the fruit mm -hmm. and did eat. That's when it happened to her heart. And from there, it led to her mind being corrupted. And you, want, you might want to argue that, well, the devil corrupted her mind before. Well, in a certain respect, Yes. <coughs> but they went and hid themselves and were ashamed. They were ashamed. Yes. And so corrupted reasoning comes from a corrupted heart. Again, back in Romans chapter 1, this is where this is all explained so clearly. Verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. When the heart has taken control of the will, <clears throat> this sets up a conflict between the heart and the mind. It starts a war that will end when one of them surrenders. Either the heart's going to surrender to the truth that the mind is insisting upon, or the mind is going to Submit to the feelings that the heart is insisting upon, the desires. Yes. One way or the other, it's going to happen. Yep. When the heart has taken control of the will, that's what it does. Our conscience is the protest of our mind against what we are allowing in our heart and yielding our body to. Our conscience bothers us. Yep. That's our mind. That's the conflict. That's the struggle. That's what you find in Romans chapter 7 when it talks about uh, the law of my mind and the law in my members. I find then another law in my members that it, it's contrary to the law of my mind. <clears throat> well, the law of your mind is you know the truth. 
Your mind knows truth. And your heart feels and wants, desires. And when the heart gets its way, the, the mind condemns, the knowledge in your mind condemns you. And that's what holding the truth and unrighteousness means. It's all these people that say they're saved and that they, they live in wickedness. The, uh, living with a condemned evil conscience, bothering you, troubling you all the time. If your heart condemn you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, you're in big trouble. Yeah. God's greater than your heart. So the heart has broken away from the constraints of rational reasoning and is operating in the realm where truth doesn't matter, where, which the Bible describes as wicked imaginations. Mm-hmm. So the assault begins pretty much simultaneously upon the heart and the minds of a people, a nation, you know, a people, a church, a family, any kind of group of people. There's a definite pattern to this degeneration as we saw last week. You remember we talked last week about the churches and I gave you all those numbers and and the pathway of what the church first allowed Allowed women in the pulpits and then, you know, then homosexuals and then transgenders and all of this. <clears throat> so there's a definite pattern to this degeneration like we saw last week. <clears throat> Feminism knocks down the door to all the rest of it. The first thing that happens, feminism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By its very... Meaning, feminism throws out the divine order and all that has been foundational to Christian civilization and, and therefore quickly brings about moral breakdown and collapse. <clears throat> when the women leave their proper role, Romans chapter 1, leave the natural use of the woman. Right. When she leaves her proper role in God's divine order yeah. as mother, and wife. And she tries to swap places with the man. Then the moral collapse is just right around the corner. Because when women step out into a man's world, I mean, you know, what are we doing? Having women guards in men's prisons. You know, how foolish. I just can't imagine that the people in high places are that foolish. They're that wicked is what they are. And that blind is what they are. And, you know, I remember when they started this stuff in the military and stuff, and they sent a bunch of women out on an aircraft carrier, and in seven months, they less than seven months, they had to haul them out of their own helicopters off of the, off of the ship. You know why, don't you? They were pregnant. The women get on the boat with 7,000 crewmen. Uh, yeah. Just put a few women out there and see what happens. Well, I can take care of themselves. Sure, they did a good job. They, should. they always do. They end up doing the same thing every time. Every time. Can't do it that way. It destroys everything. It brings about the moral collapse of everything. Men and women are not the same. Feminism is an attack on both the moral truth and the rational thinking. It's an unworkable philosophy of life that only leads to chaos and destruction. It's an attack on moral truth because God established us. He created us male and female. He gave us and defined clearly in this book the roles of a man and the role of a woman in life. The divine order. And so we... The mind has to be corrupted to throw all that out and start thinking crazy. Like, you know, a woman can do anything a man can do. I mean, there never was a bigger lie ever uttered. It's not true. You can turn it around the other way and say, a man can do anything a woman can do. Well, see, everybody will protest about that right away. But how foolish it is. What kind of irrational thinking is it to say that a woman can do anything a man can do? It's irrational. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. And it's a lie. Yes. Sure. It's not based on truth and facts. Leave the Bible out of it. It's not even based on truth and facts that way. Right. 
By any measure, women and men are not the same. And so it's an attack on both moral truth and rational thinking. It's an unworkable philosophy of life. It's like the, you know, we were talking Sunday. I saw, I think it's Saturday, <laughs> there was a, a, a woman cop got killed last weekend in the state of Missouri somewhere, but she just went to work on the, poli on the, on the police force, the state patrol, last year. She got killed. She had six children at home and a husband. <clears throat> and she's out chasing, the high-speed chase, chasing some criminal and got killed. <coughs> Why? Yeah, that's my question. Why? Why? That is totally out of her place. Yes, sir. She had no business doing that. No. They didn't have no play business hiring her to do that. Yes. It's wrong. Yes, Ain't nobody going to agree. I don't care. I mean, y'all do, but people outside, they don't. They think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. See? Yep. They're irrational. That's right. I'm not being irrational. No. <clears throat> I'm standing for what is tried and proven through 6,000 years of history. Yeah. We got plenty to look at. Yeah. We got plenty to look at in our own lifetime. We've got plenty of examples to look at all around us. And we know that is the wrong thing to do. No. It's a man, that's where a man ought to be, not a woman. Amen. A woman shouldn't be out in a trench shooting guns and fighting in wars and, and doing all of this. Women shouldn't be running the country. That's why we're in such a mess. <laughs> you want to go to any factory, any business, any corporation... And that's the major reason they're all in chaos and, yes. and falling all to pieces. Yep. Right. You can call me a male chauvinist all you want to. That ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't against women and I'm not against women being educated and smart and having skills and all of that. But I'm against women who hate the role God made them to be. Yes. Yes. Right. I hate it. I hate it when women hate God. And his ways. Yes. And resist him. And look what it costs these six children of that lady. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Well, feminism's attack. Men and women are not the same. <clears throat> Trying to swap places and roles will not work. Not in the long run. It'll destroy the, the, the civilization. Yes. It will. Sure. The welfare of the children. You know, marriage is devalued and divorce becomes the right thing instead of the wrong thing to do. You'd be amazed how many people believe divorce is the right thing to do. Yeah. Well, you tell me the other day about a woman and she's, you know, willing for her daughter to, she'd rather see her daughter to shack up and live with a guy than get married. She, she could put up with that easier and she could put up with long fingernails or something, you know. I mean, my goodness. That's irrational. <clears throat> See, God, the devil gets people to thinking crazy like this. The welfare of the children is subtracted from the equation and they don't matter anymore. <laughs> In other words, they're placed on the altar to Molech. Yeah. Might as well just put them on the altar and burn them up. Yeah. You don't care what happens to them. Right. You don't care how it affects their life. They'll get over it. Uh, no. no, they won't. It wouldn't be any more cruel if you put them on Molech's altar and burn them up in the fire. That's right. That's Shack, shacking becomes equal with marriage and women lose all their dignity, all their security, and all their feeling of worth. Yes. <laughs> you ever thought about that? Yes. If I was a woman, <clears throat> I can just, I, I've got to try to imagine, but I know that I would feel ashamed, uh, defiled, soiled, uh, unjustly treated. I would feel like that I've ruined it forever. I mean, but everybody pushes for that now and it's equal. <clears throat> You'd be amazed how many people sit in Baptist churches that thinks it's okay to shack up. Better off this. You know, you don't get married and then you got all that trouble of dividing everything. Just, you know, just live together, try it for a while and see if it's going to work. 
godless. Yes, sir. It don't work. It does things to people's minds, and especially the women. Yes, sir. <laughs> the men don't suffer from it too much. No, no, no obligation. They get everything free. No obligation, no commitment. They can walk out any time, and you're on your own. Yep. I don't understand why a woman would do that. Mm -hmm. Why do you give everything away for nothing in exchange? Nothing. Why would you let a man use you and take advantage of you like that and think you're empowered? <clears throat> no, you're not. You're a fool. You're a foolish woman. That's right. That's right. No man who loves you would do that to you. That's right. Very true. All this leads to mental issues, especially with women and children and young people. Once these seeds are sown for a generation or two, rational thinking becomes a rare commodity. The focus changes to the perverse. From feminism, we go through all of that, and then the focus changes to the perverse. And homosexuality and sexual deviance of all sorts is normalized and accepted and eventually promoted above the natural and right way. Romans 1, 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. The verses 26 through 27 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change their, the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir, which was meat, which is what they deserved. They received <coughs> the sickness <coughs> and the diseases that they deserved, which is meat. It's what they get for doing that. Yes. From this point, the pace picks up toward total depravity of heart and mind. In verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So the natural progression when sex is made common and acceptable in all circumstances is to the very confusion of the genders. And so now we have transgenderism and all these irrational ideas and beliefs that are totally opposed to facts and nature. <clears throat> well, when the women start dressing like men, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. When feminism came in, what did they want to do first? Well, they want to wear their pants. Yeah. And uh, that was not because they had to work in the factories in World War II. That's a bunch of baloney. They were doing it with some of the very first feminists, the ones who fought for su women's suffrage back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. They were walking down the street in their bloomers and doing stuff like that in protest and in defiance of God, really. That's what it was all about. Start dressing them different. Mix it up. You know, God said a woman's hair, if she have long hair, it is her a glory. It's her glory. It's her covering. It's a glory unto her. <clears throat> so they, they, they want to cut it off. Short. Now men, women are wearing their hair just like men used to wear them. You see them all the time. I mean, they're... They're tapered up the back to the skin, just like a man's haircut. Yes. <clears throat> a lot of a lot of times we'll be in a store or something, and I'll say, "Is that a man or a woman?" Can't tell. And then you wonder why this transgenderism has come along. It's the result. It's the natural result of coming through all of this feminism, yeah. mixing it up, and then. <clears throat> You know, depreciating the men and exalting the women, while at the same time the women are devalued and degraded. 
And then you get to this place where we're at now. Where does it all go from here? Well, the answer is nowhere but to destruction and annihilation. The Bible makes it crystal clear what happens when humanity reaches this level of corruption in their minds and hearts. Where we're at right now. Let me tell you, let me read it to you. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Why is he going to kill all them too? Because man had corrupted them also. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. He burned them to ashes. He turned them to ashes, the Bible says in the New Testament. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we read that some of the children of Israel... It, this is the thing it lists. They lusted after evil things. They worshipped idols. They were fornicators. They tempted the Lord. They dared him to do something about it. And they murmured and complained that the Lord was not good enough to them. And they were destroyed. And he said, these things were for our ensamples. That if you do the same, God's going to do you the same. We read this morning, Asa. <clears throat> The prophet came to him, just like he came to Solomon, just like he came to David, just like he came to others in the history of Israel and told them, the other leaders, and said, as long, if you'll serve, God said, if you'll serve me and keep my commandments, I'll stay with you. But if you forsake me, I'll forsake you. Mm-hmm. I told her, I said, isn't that, isn't that quite different than the message of today? No matter what you do, Jesus is just going to love you anyway. It doesn't matter what you do, no matter what you think, what you do, how you go, you can do anything you want to God, and He'll never, He'll never forsake you. No, that's misunderstood. Yes. You better believe it's misunderstood by people, because they think they can do anything and get away with it, and God won't forsake them. <clears throat> Jesus said that to His disciples. He said that to those who believe yes. in Him. Who love him. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He says that to the same people. Who have made that same commitment to him. That's who can claim that promise. Everybody else can't. I've known people that sat in church for years. And then became a sodomite. Don't you tell me that God's still coddling them. And that they got a home in heaven. And everything's okay. Because they made that profession. They got baptized. This old boy ain't going to never believe that stuff. <clears throat> the Bible doesn't teach that. Now this is truth and not opinion. What we just read in the Bible there. And so we can be sure that we're headed for the same thing as everyone else who has went this way before. So I'm talking about us as a nation. Psalm 9 verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. That includes ours. Yes, sir. You better believe it. That includes the one that you pledge allegiance to. Yes. No exceptions. All right, now, skepticism is the mark of this generation. But it's very obvious that this skepticism is really directed at all that is orthodox only. That's all they're skeptical about. They're not skeptical about aliens. They're not as skeptical about ghosts and Bigfoot and... And sea monsters and ghosts, they're not skeptical about anything like that. They're just skeptical about all these old timers and how stupid they were and how wrong they were and how foolish they were about everything. I mean everything. From the way they ran the government to the way they raised their children to the way they had families and the way they (laughs) married and everything else. They were all wrong about everything. Webster's Dictionary says that skepticism is an undecided, inquiring state of mind, (coughs) doubt, uncertainty. (coughs) 
<clears throat> you know what a corrupted mind is? It's a doubting mind. Yes. Not sure of anything. A mind has to have facts to make decisions. So you got to know some things. You can't be confused about everything. <clears throat> if you had to get back to your house and you knew which direction it was, You'd have to have a, you know, I mean, you'd have to trust the compass or you'd have to look at the stars or something. You'd have to get your bearings from some fixed object. Yes. That's right. You can't just start out and say, well, I, this, you know, maybe this is the way and just start walking. <laughs> it's got to be facts. You can't just, the mind won't operate on in doubt. You're in a mess if you're in doubt. The doctrine that no fact or principle can be certainly known. That's what skepticism is. Don't believe nothing. You remember me preaching about uh, uh, critical thinking. And I told you that's what critical thinking is. It's doubting everything. Well, they've been lying to you all this time. How many times have you heard that? I heard it today again. They've been, they've been lying to you. They've been covering it up. They've been telling you wrong all along about everything, you know, about all of our forefathers of our nation, about all the science, about everything, about what you ought to eat and what you ought not to eat, and that, you know, everything you can think of. That's the first, that's the major selling point. That'll get the attention of your prospect that you're trying to sell something to quicker than anything. They've been lying to you all the time. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. You're fixing to get lied to again. You doubter. You skeptic. You critical thinker who thinks you're smarter because you won't believe anything. You better believe the truth. <laughs> you better learn to believe and embrace yes, what's true. Mm -hmm. And you better know how to find the truth. They've been lying to you all this time. That's a very common term you'll hear and read now. Just before they show you some outlandish, irrational, far out nonsense. And these self-professing critical thinkers have a ravenous appetite for the fantastic the supernatural, the superstitious, and the dark fantasies that they're served up. Did you ever notice that? These people who are they're critical thinkers. They're just reaching all the time for something that's way out there. You know, odd, strange, unique, new. And they'll believe it. I mean, they'll just grab it and swallow it right now without even tasting of it first. When absolute moral truth is abandoned, individual freedom is lost and the whole structure of that civilization collapses because it corrupts the minds. <clears throat> the only place where these foundational things can be found is in the Word of God. The Bible you hold in your hand right now, that's the only place you can find these foundational truths that'll, that'll help you to think rationally right true yeah. it's the only place you're going to find it you, you don't think Google's going to be faithful to, do you <laughs> can you ask Alexa <laughs> they've been asking Alexa this week about well, why should I vote for Trump why should I vote for Kamala you seen all that didn't you well, <clears throat> Alexa will not, that's Amazon. <clears throat> she'll tell them if they ask, why should I vote for Trump? She'll say, I'm, I cannot give any, endorse any political candidate or, or give any advice about politics. But when they ask about Kamala, well, she's a woman. There's lots of reasons to vote for Kamala. She's a woman of color, and she's been in a, di a district attorney, and she has a lot of experience, and she's really blah, blah, blah. I mean, it'll go on and on. Yeah. And then, so they contacted Amazon, and Amazon, this is all the news 
outlets, you know, they did this. They called, contacted Amazon. Amazon said, well, <laughs> it was an error. We've got it fixed now. Yeah. yeah. You can't find truth out there. You ain't going to find it in Google or anywhere else on the Internet. Here's the truth right here. The only way you're going to think right is if you, if this book and what it says in it is the foundation of your thought process. Yes. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How are you going to know his mind if you don't without this book? There is no way. You don't sit around and imagine and dream and think about what he was like and how he thought. Right here, this book tells you how he thought. Read the Gospels. Yes, sir. Read the whole Bible and you'll know the mind of God. And let this mind be in you. <clears throat> Wrong. When absolute foundational truth is abandoned, human reasoning becomes insane. And this is what we're seeing now as this phase of the devil's strategy bears its fruit. First comes feminism, homosexuality, sexual perverseness and uncleanness such as incest and bestiality and pedophilia and then transgenderism. And, and the devil takes off his mask after that and his makeup and we're back to dark paganism again. And this is exactly the path that God warned Israel so many times about concerning the people of the land that God was given to Israel. <clears throat> Listen to me. We'll be done in a minute here. But these, are the, these were the practices. Those things I just named, we went through them twice. We went through them last week with the apostasy of the church. It is exactly the same sins, abominations, same pathway that God warned Israel about. Not doing what those people of the land were doing. These were the practices of those people. And the very reason that the land vomited them out. Before these verses in Leviticus, God lists... I'm going to read in Leviticus chapter 18. But before I read these... <laughs> this is what God said in the verses before. I'm trying to save time and not reading the whole thing. But God listed the specific sins of the people of the land were committing. The first 13 verses dealt with incest. One verse dealt with sex with a woman during her uncleanness. One verse with adultery, one verse with sacrificing your children to Molech, one verse with homosexuality, and one verse with bestiality. That's what those people were doing. And then God said, Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. <clears throat> Man, that's pretty strong language. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations. Note how many times God repeats this. <clears throat> Whether any of your own, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. Nobody do this stuff. Nobody do this stuff. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled. That's twice that he said that. That the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any of these abominable Customs which were committed before you, and that you defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. The pagan heart is corrupt, and the pagan mind is irrational and insane. Man cannot continue to live on the earth when rational thinking and reasoning is set aside. Everything will collapse. Mm -hmm. Nothing will work when nobody's thinking right. Because if you're not thinking right, then you're not going to do right. right. 
That's why nothing works anymore. It's why, in spite of our technology and our computers that do it all for us, something is messed up all the time. Yes, <laughs> Nothing it works like it's supposed to. None of the systems, none of the government, none of the... Have you dealt with Social Security or uh, any of the Missouri state government deals? Have you tried to deal with any of it? <laughs> It's, it is all broken. Why? Because people don't think anymore. They don't think. They're not thinking when they're driving their car down the road. They're in la-la land driving their car. They're looking at the phone, messing with their radio. They're eating. They're looking out the window. I never come, to this, come from home to here without somebody meeting somebody on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> They're not paying attention. They're not thinking. And there's no rational thinking. Very little of it. Very little of it. I don't know how we can get by on the little bit that we do have. People are not thinking according to facts. You know, mankind can't do this. Oh, when the inmates take over the asylum, the game's over. That's where we're at. All these things are the reason that we know Jesus is coming soon. I, I believe that. I don't know how anybody could not believe it. I don't know how you could look at the situation in light of all these things that we've been talking about here, and especially this, and not realize that Jesus is coming soon. He has to. It's not going to last. <laughs> I also read in the news that Russia is they're, they're worried because Russia is building launch facilities next to a nuclear warhead storage facility. And what it is, they've got nuclear-powered missiles. They've got a nuclear reactor for the power source on a missile to carry a nuclear warhead somewhere and blow somebody up. I mean, you put a nuclear reactor on a missile and crash it somewhere. Is that irrational? How's that going to work out? It doesn't matter. It's like the Muslims. Their thinking is irrational. It doesn't matter if they get destroyed. As long as they kill, do away with Israel, as long as they can make sure that Israel is no longer on the face of this earth, they're willing to all die. That's irrational. Isn't it? Yes. That's not... Uh, he gave us some instructions about these days, and we need to be reminded. Matthew 24, verse 42, he said, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. In verse 44, he said, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. These are verses that we've had for memory verses this year. I wanted you to try to memorize them and get them familiar in your mind so you'd think about this. Matthew 24, verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. <laughs> Who's going to be ready when the Lord's coming? When the Lord comes? The ones who are watching. Who's going to be watching? The ones who are thinking. The ones who are thinking right. And ain't got their head in the sand. And got their heart full of this world and their head full of, of the lies of this world. <clears throat> and got your mind messed up till you can't think right anymore about God and about right and wrong and about what's important. Draw some lines and set up your perimeters and determine that you're not going to allow your mind to operate except in the truth. <clears throat> and, that, and that truth is the Word of God. Don't allow yourself the liberty of forming opinions and beliefs based upon or influenced by your feelings or emotions or desires. You listening to me. But on what's tried and proven. I mean, determine. Don't allow yourself to form opinions and beliefs that's just based on what you think. Or what you desire. What you'd like it to be. And don't throw out truth. 
because of the human element in history. Truth remains the same in spite of that fact. Men are not God, and where sinful men trod, you're going to find injustices and and inequality, inequity. (laughs) But truth remains the same in spite of that fact. It's the same as saying, well, I won't go to church because I know somebody down there that's a hypocrite. What about all the good people? You're going to throw everything out because of one rotten apple? Is that the way you do your potatoes, your apples, everything else? No, not usually. Be a rational thinker and don't allow your mind to be sucked into this flood of pagan imagination and insanity. And then I want to read this. I I really, there's not a whole lot of point in reading this. Seth talked about it in Sunday school for weeks and we've mentioned it so many times but Philippians 4. Eight and nine. Y'all know what it says? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. There's your rational thinking. There's the basis for thinking yes. right. right. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Yes. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you got what I wanted to get across here tonight or not. But I'm just telling you yep. what I've preached so much about the mind <clears throat> and it's the devil's, it's the arena that he attacks us in. But he also attacks us in our heart. He has to corrupt our heart yep. and our mind. He'll mess up the way you think. Do you think, do you believe that you think right? Of course, everybody will say, well, sure I do. It's something that maturity, experience, time, And studying the Word of God helps you to understand just how far off the bubble you are. Your your way of thinking should be correctable by the Word of God. And it ought to all come out right in the end. If it's right, if you put all the right things in it, then the result will be right. As far as thinking and reasoning goes. You can't take a little bit of the world. You can't take a little bit of their philosophy. You can't just take a smorgasbord from different people you know. And the way they think. And put it all together. And know you're going to come out all messed up. Right thinking. Well just go back to three and four hundred years ago. And read some books that intelligent people wrote back then. And you'll see what it is to think right. The way they thought puts us to shame. Makes us seem like foolish little kindergartners. Remedial kindergartners is what it really... I mean, worse than that. They knew how to think and reason things out. It's where this country, that's how it began. It's how it came to be. Because there were people back then that thought. And they had the basis for their thinking right. And the devil's destroying it. Right out from under us. Don't let him get you. Don't let him get your mind. Guard your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. Yeah. Keep it. Keep, keep, Keep yourself. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. I thank you for helping us tonight. I pray you bless us to our hearts. Help us to receive and remember these things and to fight the good fight. And not give up and not, and not uh, be vulnerable. Help us to protect us, our children, our own minds. Lord, help us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And to not be ignorant of the devil's devices. In Jesus' name, amen.